Rob dumped another VW Beetle back onto me here. In this predicament, the key was also lost, but part of the agreement with Rob is that the Super Volks rod has to go. We'll just give it a minute, see if we can get that tire nice and round again. Push the start button, and... Welcome back to Duckman Cycles and VW Garage. I'm your host, The Duckman. <laughs> well, I don't too often review a product here on YouTube because not all of them will complement my YouTube channel or enhance my, my video creativity and help my community. If it's not a good product, I won't review it, but this product here is one such exception. This is the JF Egro 3000 amp charger and compressor. And this unit is rather impressive in what it does. So we're gonna review it here in this video. There'll be links down below in the video description as well as the discount code. You guys really need to check this thing out. It impressed me, it really surprised me. And well, that's what B and I are gonna be talking about today. So like you like, you comment, subscribe. Don't forget to plug the dingle blaze, get updates every time I upload a video. Check out DuckShit.net for all of my different social media links. And we're looking forward to seeing you right after the intro. You probably remember Rob, the owner of the Super Volks rod that we have been working on here. Well, Rob dumped another VW Beetle back onto me here. That's right, this 1972 Super Beetle is back. Long story short, Rob gave the Beetle to his son where he started to work on it, but it sat in his yard for the past year. Then he had to move out of his place at the last minute. This poor orphaned VW had no place to go, but it had to go immediately. In this predicament, the key was also lost, and I can't explain how big of a hump it was to get this thing moved in a hurry, in the dark, without being able to open the doors or turn the steering. Well, uh, we'll show you how to deal with these things in a future video. But, this is this car's second stint here, but hopefully it's only for the temporary, and only for the short term. The Duckman's home of unclaimed Volkswagens was here again to assume possession of yet another Volkswagen here. Yeah, that's right. As we know, I already have too much junk here, but part of the agreement with Rob is that the Super Volks rod has to go. It's been sitting for a little while since the last videos were made of it. It's now got a flat tire and the battery is dead. And it's in the place where my compressor hose and my shop battery charger can't reach it easily. So in walks JF Egwo with their 12 volt 3000 amp car jump starter and air compressor. Yes, that's right, a compressor and a jump starter in a single unit. Well, I think we might be expecting an awful lot of its battery, having to both fill a tire and start the engine, but there's no better way to give an honest review other than to demand the most from it and all at once. Well, let's go ahead and open up the box. All right, here we have our JF Egwo, both jump starter and compressor. Go ahead and pop that box open and let's see just exactly what's in there. Looks like we got some kind of a bag. That looks like a carrying case. A carrying case. All right. Looks like there might be something in it. Yeah, you got your cables. Cables, let's see them. Right. Let's grab a fistful of them. Cables. Looks like we got our alligator clip cable. We got our compressor connector. We got a charger. cigarette lighter charger. How about that? So you actually can charge it in the car. And you have an AC adapter, which I've already unwound because I charged this thing overnight. So we're actually pre-prepared. Now what have you there? Instructions? Instructions and a little thank you. And thank you. What does the thank you say? Thanks. Thank you for choosing JF Eggwo. We make our products to keep you safe and give you peace of mind. Your satisfaction comes first. To us, there's no best. There's only better. We welcome your feedback, so don't hesitate to contact us with your questions or concerns. We aim to please and look forward to hearing from you. Best regards, your friends at JF Eggwo. 12 months warranty. All right, 12 months. Yeah. 12 months, usually you get 90 days on a lot of this stuff. Yeah, 12 months good. is actually quite impressive. And then uh, spare parts. Spare parts, are we sure it's spare parts? No, these are adapters oh, for adapters. the compressor, so you can feel like a football or something. That's what's in here, it's actually the needle and a few other things. Like a bike tire. Right, exactly right. Perfect. Yep. All right. Then, Actual looks like compressor. you have the device itself. Do you? Uh -huh. Let's see it. Here it is. Now it looks like it has a pressure gauge on there. There's a power switch. You got USB ports. You have your plug-in for hooking up the uh, thing to power to get it charged. A power button. On the side is a flashlight. And then on the bottom is our compressor connector and the charging port where you plug the alligator clips in. Right. Let's see if we can get the tire filled up on this thing. Absolutely. All right. Let's jump to it. I placed it on charge overnight to ensure its usefulness today. 
Nice percentage indicator. I like that. Well, let's see what we can do with the tire first. All right, B's got our charger here. Yep. Got the JF Eggwo charger with the cables. And actually, these are the hoses. The compressor hose is here, and you have another hose in your hand there. Okay. What's that hose there? That one looks like it's the one that actually connects to the tire itself, so that's the one we're going to use. Yep. That looks like it'll probably just thread right in. Oh, it's all right, you're fine. We didn't break nothing. <laughs> Not yet. Now, most people would probably keep that even attached. Is that tight? The thread on there all the way? This is going to be an airtight connection, so I'll make sure it's right. Okay, now you would take that end, and I'm sure you've used one of those before. Put it on the tire valve under there. And then flip the handle down. Or the lever, I should say, but that's it. It should lock it right on. Whoop. Fantastic. All right. All right, now, according to instructions, you turn this on, and then you hit the power button on the side. And you set your pressure. We're not going quite to 40. We don't even need 30. This is a Volkswagen. PSI, 20, and go. And it didn't go. <laughs> there it is. All right. Now we have a handy battery gauge on the side so we can see how much juice it's using. See if we can get that tire nice and round again. It's working. It's going. I see it's coming up. Yeah, it's coming around again. A lot faster than I expected it to be. Yeah. I honestly, I expected a battery powered one to not be that quick. This has come off the ground. That rim was on the ground. Yeah, it was. It came up a lot faster than it did. Wow. And how much juice we got left still. This still shows 100%. Wow. That's <laughs> impressive. It's still got a ways to go yet because it's certainly not full. I mean, I can still dent the tire a little bit. But, uh, yeah, some of the 12 volt ones that I use that plug in the car, they don't fill up that fast. Wow. So this is actually working a lot better than that. A little more CFM, I guess. Cubic feet per minute of air that's moving, it's uh, quicker. This is actually mighty impressive. I'm gonna have to keep this in the car with me for sure. Absolutely. <laughs> now we don't usually feature products on our channel that uh, doesn't enhance what we do. This is the reason why you don't see crap. And I've got a lot of crap sent to me over the years, but this item is not it. And this is why you're seeing it in this video. Yeah, that tire came up right off the ground. It's probably got a little ways to go yet before it hits 20 PSI. The Volkswagen, typically you would have it a little bit higher than that. If you want to know where the details are on that in the Volkswagen, you can find it in the glove box. Well, the rear actually says 27 PSI in here. So that's how much you should set it to. That seems a little higher than what I'm used to, but some of the older Volkswagens were lower. And these, of course, are aftermarket rims and tires. But the deal is, in an emergency situation, you just want air in the tire. Yeah, it doesn't have to spare, too. Right, it doesn't have to be up to spec. It just needs to get you rolling down the road. And in the case of this, it looks like it's going to handle exactly that. This actually has filled it faster than it would have taken me to run all my compressor lines out of the house, to bring them all the way over here, to wait for my tank to inflate on the compressor. <laughs> I actually got the air into this thing quicker. How's it doing yet? Still shows 100%. And imagine when it hits 20 PSI, it should just stop. There it is. Right. That was actually incredibly fast. Leave it on there. Okay. Let's go ahead and bump the PSI up to 27. And we'll see if it, uh, it'll give us that extra seven PSI. Because that was impressive. That was, that was very impressive. <laughs> if it filled that tire that quickly to 20 PSI, it could probably do all four tires. Back there shows the climbing right now. That's so fast. So, 
Yeah, and not but maybe what, 30 more seconds. We'll probably be up to uh, up to spec. And it still shows. up the proper spec. I mean, it does say 27, but it's still at 27. There it is. That's exactly what it's supposed to be. Well, I guess the computer in there is satisfied, and so are we. That was, that was impressive. I am quite impressed. I did not have as high of expectations out of that device as, as we just demonstrated here. This, this is, this is amazing. It does show 75% at this point, though. And that hose got nice and warm, as you might expect it would. It was moving a lot of air, compressed air through there, and compressed air makes heat. Maybe we need to build an intercooler for it. What do you think? The turbo guys out there know what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, ow. Yeah, wow. Yeah, and the tire is a little bit warmer than it was, too, because it's uh, got the warm air in it. But that worked really, really good. We still have 75% charge. As long as you have more than 25, you can use it to jump the battery. Ooh. So that's next. Okay. All right, let's shut that compressor back off. Okay. Boop. And then remove the valve. Oh, she let all the air out. All of it. Put her little condom back on there. Ding, 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 ding. There you go. Look how beautiful that is. And the tire's nice and round. I'm gonna go squat again. <laughs> how warm did the uh, box get? Oh. The hose is warm as I expected, uh, but yeah. too warm. I expected the whole box to get like warm, and it didn't. Nope, just the... I expected the battery to heat up in there, and yeah, it didn't do any of that. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay, well that hose, Technically, doesn't need to be there anymore. For those of you using this in your car, you probably would leave it attached ordinarily, but we're going to detach that and just remove it. Unless you can wind up the whole thing in the bottom. Ooh. You might be able to. If it fits in there, then make it work that way. No. No. Might have too many hoes for this party. <laughs> but we've got this uh, charging unit here. We're going to run the jump starter portion of it. Mm -hmm. so let's check out how much battery power we've got on there. Nope, wrong one. Turn it off. Push this power button here on the side. There you go, and it shows 100%. I don't think that's right. I think because it's been sitting off for a little bit, it probably built up some voltage in that battery. So as soon as we put a load on, it's gonna start dropping. But the fact is, it says more than 25%. And the instructions say, if it's less than 25%, don't try to jump your battery. It shows 100, I think we're good. Let's hook up the charging cables. Those are these guys here. And they have to go in the port on the side. Looks like there's a little rubber flap door, right? And it appears to be polarized. They have different shapes, so they can't go in wrong which is good. Now for those of you watching this video, you know about my previous Volkswagen videos before where the battery in this car was hooked up backwards because somebody didn't observe polarity. They only observed colors. And unfortunately on classic Volkswagens, very often the colors are reversed. Is it stupid? No, because Volkswagen was pretty consistent. <laughs> it's just not the same as the rest of the world. Yep. So we're gonna get this hooked up to that battery and see if we can get this thing cranked over. And I'm hoping this thing starts. This thing has been a little weird lately. Uh, the carburetor needs to be gone through. Correct, the positive is on the right-hand side. You got it. That's the side that goes off to the voltage regulator. Well, if you have one, that's way over there. This one's an alternator car, so it doesn't have it. Right, hook your negative up. You can lay that charger right up on top. Lay it up there, go ahead. It's safe, good. And then come around the other side, and let's go ahead and try to start it. Now it should be charging the battery as of this moment. I don't imagine it's giving it any boost of any sort. All right, B's gonna hop on in here. Okay. First, make sure that you're not in gear. Don't step on the throttle yet, you might flood it. Make sure, no, pull forwards and back, right. Make sure, I think you're in your third gear or something. There you go, that's where you wanna be. Okay, remember how that switch panel works? Right, and now we got light, that's a good step. We got the stupid lights. Good, you got your idiot lights? Yep. Okay, go ahead and push the start button. And, yeah, we got something, we got something. Yeah, we got something, it's working. That's good. Yes. That actually cranked over faster than I thought it would have. Absolutely. That battery was just a little dead. It's not actually a, you know, a flat, flat battery. It's just something that's been sitting for a number of weeks without running. 
And as you can tell from the way the engine sounds, it's still got some issues. I'm gonna have to reset the timing on it and I gotta redo the carburetor, but that's something for another day. Fact is, it worked and it shut itself off like it's supposed to. We can disconnect. That's all there was to it. So not only did it fill the tire, but it also still jump-started the car. Absolutely. <laughs> Push this back. Go ahead and shut that car off. We're gonna go through the carburetor on that in another video. We'll handle that. That thing is uh, very, very impressive. Now pushing the power button here, let's see how much charge we have on it. Now it actually says a true 75%. 75. Even though it's been sitting for a minute, it says 75%. That, that's, uh, that's great. That's really great. Amazing. No, I'm, I'm quite impressed with this device. This is something I will be keeping in my car. Yeah. Absolutely, yes. This would be amazing instead of having to rely on somebody else to jump your car. Yep. The instructions say to keep it charged uh, roughly every six months. You can leave it sitting in your car or in your garage. Uh, probably better to keep it in a cooler environment if you can, but if you do go on any road trips, have it charged before you go. Just always keep it charged. It just seems like a smart thing to do. Wow. I really don't believe it. If this were an actual roadside predicament and the car still had problems, there's still enough charge remaining to charge my cell phone to call for an emergency or to use the built-in emergency flashlight. Because how many times do we not have a working flashlight within reach when we actually need it? Never! Right? You guys know. Never. The flashlight also has flashing modes to attract attention or deter oncoming traffic. It even has an SOS mode. Has anyone actually ever used an SOS mode on a device before? I've seen several devices with it, but do kids today even know what that means? Please share your stories down below in the comments. Well, Father's Day is coming up, and what does a dad want that already has everything, but he wants more than anything? Tools, that's what! And you can find links down below to the JF Eggwo 3000 amp car jump started air compressor device down below in the video description. WITH A DISCOUNT CODE! Yes, you get a discount because you saw the video here. But that's not all. JF Eggwo has been kind enough to offer us a free device to our fans. Simply leave a comment down below and we'll randomly draw one as the winner. That's right. You can win a free JF Eggwo car jump starter and air compressor device for yourself. Special thanks to JF Eggwo for allowing us to review their awesome product. And again, links are down below in the video description, including a discount code. And don't forget, Father's Day is coming up, guys, so make sure you get in there and you get one for Dad. I mean, this thing is truly impressive. I will keep this and I will use this product. Sometimes B gets my stuff here, and this one I'm keeping. Sorry, B. It's all good, I get it. You're gonna have to arm wrestle me for this one. That's fine. <laughs> so, if you like it, comment and subscribe. Don't forget to plug the dingle bellies so to get updates every time I upload a video. Check out DuckShit.net for all my different social media links, and we'll see you on the next one. Pose. Work it. Sassy, sexy. Photo shoot. It's all you. You are the room. <laughs> you are the attention. Supermodel. Vogue for me. That's probably terrible, but still. <laughs>